Do you have an upcoming MCCQE part two and want to learn how to prepare for your exam? You've come to the right place. The Medical Council of Canada Qualifying Examination Part 2 will test your medical theoretical knowledge and your readiness for independent medical practice. In this video, you'll learn what the MCCQE Part 2 is, what to expect on the test day, what kind of OSCE stations you will encounter, and how to prepare for this challenging exam. Hi, my name is Joseph Kafka, and I'm an admissions associate here at BMO. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. If you would like us to help you prepare for your MCCQE Part 2, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. And as a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video so you can navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. Now, here's what we're going to cover. What is the MCCQE Part 2? The eligibility and application process. What to expect on the exam day. What to expect at the OSCE stations. The two types of OSCE stations. How the MCCQE Part 2 is scored. How to prepare for the MCCQE Part 2. And exam tips. Now, let's get started. The MCCQE Part 2 is an objective structured clinical examination that is one of the last steps in your journey to becoming a licensed and independent physician in Canada. The exam consists of a series of clinical stations. The stations assess your ability to apply medical knowledge, demonstrate clinical skills, develop investigational and therapeutic clinical plans, as well as demonstrate professional behaviors and attitudes at a level expected of Canadian physicians. The MCCQE Part 1 and MCCQE Part 2 form two components of the licentiate of the Medical Council of Canada, LMCC, which in turn is one of the prerequisites for licensure and entry into independent practice in Canada. The MCCQE Part 2 is normally held twice a year on a weekend in May and in October. You will complete the examination over the course of one day. To be eligible to take the MCCQE Part 2, you must meet the following conditions. You must have passed the MCCQE Part 1. Your final medical degree diploma must be successfully source verified. For Canadian medical graduates, confirmation of graduation is received directly from the Canadian Faculties of Medicine. You must have completed a minimum of 12 months of postgraduate clinical medical training, PGT, or osteopathic postgraduate training, or will have completed these items by the following deadline. On or before June 30th, for the May exam of the same calendar year, on or before December 31st for the October exam of the same calendar year. This criteria means that the MCCQE Part 2 is typically completed during or after residency training, in contrast to Part 1, which is typically completed prior to the beginning of your residency training. If you meet these criteria, you may start the process of applying to take part in the MCCQE Part 2. In order to apply, you must first add your name to a pre-application list during the designated pre-application period through your physiciansapply.ca account. If you're invited to apply for the exam, you'll receive an invitation asking you to choose up to three exam centers in order of preference. The MCC will do their best to accommodate your choices, but if you choose only one center, it is unlikely that you will be assigned to it. The exam is typically delivered in facilities like universities, simulation centers, hospitals, medical clinics, and so forth. It is recommended that you choose a testing facility near you, in your province, or areas that you feel confident you will be able to travel to. You can take the exam in either English or French at a center that offers the exam in your chosen language. Before the MCCQE Part 2, you'll receive an entrance card and a candidate confidentiality agreement and code of conduct form for your exam package in your physiciansapply.ca account. You must print off this card, print and complete the form, and bring them with you on the exam day. When you arrive at the exam center, you will leave your belongings at the registration desk to be stored until you complete the exam. You will be provided with two important items. Number one, a candidate notebook. Upon registration, you'll be given a small sealed notebook. You cannot open it until you're instructed to do so right before your first station. 
You may use it for writing notes while taking the examination, particularly right before you enter the station. The notebook can be used in jotting down any important notes about the station, the patient, or the problem presented. Only one notebook will be given to you, and no pages can be added or removed from it. The notes in the notebook will not be considered in your scoring. Your ID will be attached to the notebook cover. You must return this notebook when you sign out of the exam. Number two, candidate identification numbers will be attached to the cover of each candidate's notebook. They will also be printed on barcode labels that will be distributed to the examiners. When you enter the station, the examiner will confirm your candidate ID number. Additionally, you'll be required to wear the ID badge that will be provided to you at registration, which indicates the number of your start station. Without a doubt, your performance at the OSCE stations will demonstrate your readiness to become an independent physician. To get ready for this examination, you should review the ultimate guide for how to prepare for an OSCE. And remember, unlike its counterpart, MCCQE Part 1, the MCCQE Part 2 clinical exam tests your practical skills and abilities. A physician examiner, or PE, will be present in each station to assess your performance. In an exam station, you may be required to perform one or more of the following. Elicit a history. Describe a focused physical examination. In other words, instead of mimicking a physical exam, you will describe verbally to the PE what maneuvers you would perform and what you would be looking for. Manage or resolve a patient problem. Assess and manage an urgent or emergent situation. Counsel a patient and or family members. Answer oral or written questions. Extended match multiple choice questionnaire. Summarize and present findings to an examiner or colleague. Read or reference materials pertaining to the patient's situation, such as articles, charts, test results, medical lists, or summaries. Interact with physicians or other healthcare professionals. If you finish a station early, you must remain inside the station quietly and wait for a signal to leave. If you remember something more that you would like to do, you may re-engage the standard patient at any time before the final signal, except for in stations with oral questions. In stations with questions, the physician examiner will ask you one to three brief questions after the first warning signal so you're not allowed to continue interacting with the standard patient after the first warning signal. The ID badge you will be given when you register for the exam will indicate your first station. After you complete your first station, you'll proceed to the remaining stations in numeric order. For example, if your first station is number three, you'll continue to number four, five, six, and so on. You're not allowed to talk outside the rooms or between stations but keep in mind that the exam staff is there to guide you and answer your questions during the exam. You'll have two minutes to move from one station to the next and read the posted instructions. When you hear the signal, enter the room, confirm your candidate code with the examiner and proceed to your task. Here's what will be assessed in the stations. Obtaining a focused history, verbalizing a physical examination, managing an acute patient problem, organizing a discharge, discussing goals of care, delivering difficult news, dealing with forgetful or angry patients, providing advice, interacting with colleagues, and addressing conflicts within the healthcare team. In the stations, you'll be presented with problems related to 10 clinical scenarios. Be aware that you are expected to complete 12 stations, two of which are wait stations that do not contribute to your final score. There are two types of stations in the MCCQE Part 2, 14-minute stations and 6-minute paired stations. In the MCCQE Part 2, 14-minute encounter stations, there will be eight 14-minute stations, seven of which will count towards your final score. The eighth station will be a wait station. These stations will consist of encounters with standardized participants or SPs, such as physicians, nurses, and other healthcare professionals. In most stations, you'll be assessed and scored based on your interaction with the SP. Before any of the seven simulated stations, you'll be given two minutes to read the instructions posted by the door of the station. After two minutes, a signal will let you know to enter the room. You'll have 14 minutes inside the room. A warning signal will sound at the 13 minute mark. A final signal will sound at the end of your allotted time in the station. After this final signal, you must leave the room and go to the next station on your track. You will have two minutes to relocate and read the next instructions. Remember, there is no content connection between the different stations. So once you complete one, don't dwell on it. 
In the MCCQE Part 2 6 minute paired stations, you will go through four stations, one of which will be a weight station that will not count towards your final score. The three replicate stations will be comprised of two six minute components in any combination. The encounter component will consist of encounters with SPs. In most cases, you will be scored based on your interaction with the SP. The PE will be a physician or a highly trained non-physician. The non-encounter component consists of a reading task or responding to one or more extended match questions. In some non-encounter components in the paired stations, you may be asked to answer extended match questions. Read the questions carefully before you answer. Do not fill in more bubbles than specified in the question and wait until the start of the station before writing on the sheet. You will be given two minutes to read the instructions posted by the door before the encounter and non-encounter components. After the two minutes, the signal will sound for you to enter the room. You will have six minutes in the room. A warning signal will sound at the five minute mark and a final signal will sound at the end of each station. After the final signal, you must leave the room and go to the next station. You will have two minutes to get to the next station and read the instructions for it. Make sure to pay attention to the verbs in the task. These will indicate what kind of actions you will need to perform to receive credit. In a combined history slash physical examination station or a management station where you need to perform tasks that are necessary to take care of a patient's problem, it is up to you to prioritize tasks. Instead of doing the physical examination, tell the examiner what you would do and what findings you would be looking for. For example, you would describe your actions in the following way. I would assess the patient's grip strength, looking for weakness in the right hand. The instructions will provide you with the patient's name and age, the presenting problem, the setting such as family practice or emergency department, and the type of station this is, such as management or counseling station. Vital signs, test results, and or elements of the family history may also be provided. You can jot down any questions or notes you may have about the patient or the problem, so you don't forget them as you enter the room. In some stations, props will be provided either inside or outside the room. When you are provided with lab results, normal values will also be available for your reference. Be aware that you are expected to know doses of commonly prescribed medications. However, in some stations, reference pages from the Compendium of Pharmaceuticals and Specialties or CPS may be provided. You may encounter a variety of other props in any given station as well. So please do not write on them or in them and leave them in the room when you exit. The Medical Council of Canada, MCC, brings together a panel of physicians to set an acceptable level of performance and establish the passing score for the MCCQE Part 2 using a thorough standard setting exercise. This process allows the council to define an acceptable level of performance for the exam. The panel will recommend passing scores to the Central Examination Committee, or CEC, for approval. The CEC, composed of physicians and medical educators from across the country, is responsible for awarding pass or fail results to MCCQE Part 2 candidates. The established pass score will not be announced to the public. Additionally, your total test score will not be reported to you. You will simply be notified whether you passed or failed the examination. Whether you pass or fail the exam will be based on where your total score falls in relation to the passing score. If your score is equal to or greater than the passing score, you pass. A total score less than the passing score, you fail. This means that all candidates who meet or exceed the passing score will pass the exam regardless of how the other candidates perform. Each station in the MCCQE Part 2 is scored by examiners. They observe your interactions with the standardized participants and score your performance according to standards developed by the MCCQE Test Committee. Each examiner will have appropriate materials such as score sheets that include checklists of tasks and, in most cases, the rating scales. The objectivity of scoring is achieved using standardized guidelines for exam administration, the training of examiners and SPs, and the use of predetermined scoring instruments for OSCE stations. You should know that the creators of the MCCQE Part 2 cases were guided by the objectives for the qualifying examination. Use them as a guideline in preparation for your MCC exams. Go through each clinical presentation and carefully read the related objectives. If you feel your knowledge or skills in any areas are lacking, you should focus on improving them. The MCCQE Part 2 is based on common or critical patient presentations and interactions with colleagues or other healthcare professionals and family members related to the objectives. 
It might be a good idea to organize your study in a similar manner, rather than studying by disease or body system. By working from common or critical patient presentations from different disciplines, you will align your studying with the format of the examination. For each patient presentation, identify key diagnoses as well as the critical information needed for diagnosis and to rule out the differential diagnoses and for treatment. List the different parts of the physical examination, consider what investigations might be needed, and summarize key aspects of the initial management of each problem. And don't forget to visit our blog to see a list of suggested reference materials for studying. Here are some helpful tips for the MCCQE Part 2 exam. Before studying, get a handle on what you need to cover. Since the MCCQE Part 2 can cover material from a wide range of medical specialties, start keeping track of the presentations you see during different rotations by creating a log. Ensure you look at MCC's website and create your own objectives based on their guidelines so you can begin studying early. Since you'll be busy completing your residency, it's good to get started studying early. Begin studying at least one year in advance of your exam date by scheduling time every week to review material and meet with your study group. Forming a study group can often keep you on track with your exam preparations. Each group member can identify the objectives that they most need to study and focus on common or critical patient presentations. Consider having each member prepare common patient presentations that they understand well, keeping in mind differential diagnoses and the key features that help confirm diagnosis or diagnoses. Also create checklists, identify key investigations and management plans. Realistic simulations and feedback are the best way to practice. So as you prepare for the exam with your study group, post scenarios to each other and practice answering while timing yourself. It's also a good idea to get expert feedback from a senior resident or staff physician and work on implementing the feedback they give to you the next time you do a realistic simulation. You must read and reread the instructions carefully before you enter the station. Use your notebook to write down any relevant information from the instructions. Don't forget that the instructions are also available inside the room, so you can access them there as well. When you read the instructions, pay special attention to what kind of actions the instructions are asking you to perform. Limit your actions to only what is being requested. During the exam, you might be asked to assess or manage a patient with an urgent problem or trauma, for example. You must personally prioritize what information and actions have the most urgency. Make sure you do the most important task first then you can go back to the instructions and get information or make further orders. The SP can provide useful information about the tasks you should perform in the station. Use a welcoming and natural conversational tone and an organized approach to taking a history. Start with general questions before moving to more close-ended questions. Remember, you're being scored on your interactions with the SPs, so you must demonstrate concern for your patients. If you appear indifferent, the SP is trained to react accordingly and give you less information. So introduce yourself to the SP as you enter the station to create a positive atmosphere. The examiner cannot read your mind. So if you're tasked with examining a patient, you will need to say out loud everything you would do during a physical exam. The examiner is given findings to report to you, but they can only do so after you state which examinations you would do. Once you complete a station, move on and forget about it. As I mentioned earlier, the stations are not connected. Try your best not to ponder on how well you performed in the stations you already completed. Remember, some of the checklists will need to be finished once you leave the station. How often the examiner writes in the checklist is not an indicator of the quality of your performance. This wraps up our video for today. Check out our blog to learn more about the MCCQE Part 2. I've included a link in the description of this video so you can find the blog easily. If you would like us to help you with your OSCE prep, Click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Speaking of comments, if you have any questions about the MCCQE Part 2 that I didn't cover in this video, let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.